Okay. Woo, I think I'm ready to officially start the video. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight into the video because I don't know how long this is going to be. I don't want it to be too long, but, you know, I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit move however he wants to move. So if you haven't been able to tell from the title already, I'm going to be talking about my experience in hell. And some of us, even Christians, believe that hell is some metaphorical place that people don't really get sent there. They think hell isn't real. So I'm here to tell you that hell is real. Um, it is a literal place. People do get sent there. Um, it's not metaphorical. It's not some weird fantasy type sci-fi thing like it's it's not that it's real it's literal it's a place of eternal punishment eternal torment um fear just it smells like sulfur it's just a horrible place that nobody should be get, should get sent to it's really heartbreaking that our society sees hell as a place of a party or they see it as a place that they would want to go and in reality hell was never created for humans it was always created for the enemy because of what he did and how he split heaven it was never created for humans but because we have chosen to walk in the path of sin and we choose to not serve the living god the one who saved us from this place of eternal damnation we send ourselves there. We have a ticket in a way out of hell, and that ticket is Jesus Christ. Before Jesus Christ came, we had no way to connect to God. We, we didn't have a way to escape hell. We didn't have a way to be forgiven or cleansed of our sins. But when Jesus came, he came and he tore the veil so that way we could be reconnected with God. And he... um came for the redemption of our sins so hell is the punishment for our lifetime of sin and when we don't accept jesus christ and we don't acknowledge what he did on the cross we send ourselves to hell so the reason why this has even been like in my brain recently um is because i was having a conversation with a few people um like a week ago and we were talking about hell and stuff like that and god brought to my mind this experience so i was like telling them about it and then i really felt like man i need to make a youtube video on this because people need to see this people need to know that hell is real so um i'm just gonna jump right into the story so this experience actually happened about two years ago like in 2019 and um at that time i was like going through like a really hard time i really was and when I when I was going through that hard time, I found myself digging deeper into God. Like I literally threw myself into the things of God because I was just like so broken and so torn. So I'm like, I don't know anything else to do. Like I grew up in the church. I was always told that if you're going through stuff, go to God, you know. So I was just like, you know, let me just throw myself into God because this is the only thing that I know will help me will work. So I was literally throwing myself into God. Like I was reading the Bible nonstop, praying nonstop. I was addicted to fasting. I literally was watching any and every sermon on everything. And at that time, I had started really learning about like demons and hell and spiritual warfare. Like I was going the whole night. Anything that had to do with God, I was learning about it. I was trying to find it. I just wanted it because I was I wanted God. And at that time, I was watching a lot of people's testimonies. And just a little plug, if you're ever feeling down, just watch people's testimonies. Like, you will literally get lifted up, for real. But um, with that, as I was watching, like, people's testimonies, I started to come across people who were having, like, outer body experiences. They would either die or, like, the Lord would give them an outer body experience and they will like see heaven and hell or if they die they literally like went to hell and came back and they were in like the hospital or something and they're like oh my gosh i just saw jesus like so and as i was watching this stuff and i was watching it a lot when i say a lot i mean i was coming home watching it for hours i was watching it at school or like i just wanted to know about it it was interesting i was, I was curious and so um as i was watching it i started to be like 
<laughs> God, that looks kind of cool. Like I want, I want an outer body experience. Like I want to see this. I want to, I want to see hell. Like I literally was like that. I'm like, Lord, I want to see hell. Like this looks, this looks cool. And <laughs> it's so crazy because in our naivete, God will still meet us. But anyway, so I was watching all this stuff and I'm like, Lord, like I want to see this. I want an outer body experience. And, um, literally I was asking for probably like a month. I was asking God, like, Lord, show me this. Like, Lord, I want to see it. I want to see it. Like, you know, I want to know, like, I was just so deep in it. And, um, it's so crazy because I always like, I could, I consider myself to always have been close to God. So it honestly was not abnormal for me to be asking this. I'm like, Lord, I want to see this. Like, this is something I've never seen before. Nothing I, I had ever experienced before. I'm like, Lord, I didn't see demons be cast out of people. Like, I was 10 seeing demons get cast out of people. I know how to speak in tongues. I know I fast regularly. I'm like, I didn't see miracles happen. Like, but I've never had this. So Lord, it looks cool. I want to see it. Bring it on, God. So I was asking him for like a month and stuff. And then um, one night, I don't remember the specific day. It was between March and no, it was between March and April of uh, 2019. And this, I remember one night I went to bed and I woke up in the middle of the night. I don't remember what time it was at all, but I remember like, when I woke up, I was in my room, I was in my bed, and I felt this dark, dark presence in my room, like, I like dark. And I've experienced a lot of spiritual attack, but this, this was, this was dark. Like, I had never experienced this dark, dark presence, like, like, whoa, like, it was dark. And I just knew that, like, something was in there it was like I, I knew that demons or something was in my room and then it was like this presence this darkness was trying to grab me like 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 pull me out the bed like snatch me and I feel this fear like deep in my soul like my chest like I feel this fear and I'm like oh my gosh like what is going on like where am i and then it was like because okay i was laying on my side like this like because i sleep like a little baby so i was laying on my side and as i'm on my side i'm like oh my gosh like what is going on and then i hear this rumbling outside of my window like deep deep rumbling it was like this dark this deep deep rumbling like at the bottom of a volcano and it was like whoa like it was loud it was deep like this rumble like like it was it was like a big big deep rumbling and I was so terrified I'm like oh my gosh like what is happening and then I then I turned on my other side I turned on this side and as I turned on that side okay so my blinds were closed and as my blinds were closed, you know how like light sleeps through your blinds, like when they're closed at night? Um, it was like that. And I saw this light coming from my window and I saw, you know how like there's light beams coming in? I saw smoke rising up in those light beams. Like it, it was smoke in those light beams. And I knew it was a fire outside of my window. like. I knew it. It was like, oh my gosh, like it is a fire outside of my window. Like there's a fire. And I was still laying in the bed because I was so scared. It was like, it was like paralyzing fear. And then as I, I turned from my side and then I turned on my back. And then I like start feeling my back heat up. And as I was feeling my back heat up, I got like, I was scared, but I got even more scared like I was oh my gosh like I was absolutely terrified and I was like Lord am I in hell 
did I die? Like, oh my gosh, am I dead? Am I in hell? Like, oh my gosh. And then as I was thinking like, Lord, am I in hell? Like, oh my gosh, I was like, what did I do? I thought I always served you. Like, I don't understand like how I even got here. Like, I, I thought we had a relationship. Like, like, what happened? Like, why am I here? And then I had a thought like, oh my gosh, like if I had died, oh, I'm about to cry. I had this thought like, if I died, and I'm in hell, I'm not getting out. Like I'm going to be here forever. And it had, and I had this deep, deep sadness on the inside of my heart that was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to be here forever if I'm dead like am I dead did I die when I thought all those things I was still on my back and I was feeling my back heat up like bro like I'm about to like bro like I'm in hell like I'm about to get tortured and so as I feel my back heat up I started praying like I don't remember what I said in my prayer or anything but like I remember I started praying and when I was praying I heard the Lord say Sydney, the reason why you've never had one of those experiences that all the other people have had, he said, because you understand hell, like you understand the reality of it. You understand that it's not a place that you, that you want to go. It's a place of eternal torment. It's a place of just, it's not, it's not even describable. Like, oh man there's no water there's no life there's no trees there's no wind everything that is good and pleasurable about life that's not in hell you you don't get to drink water you don't get to see people see family you're going to be abandoned and you're going to be alone and you're going to get tortured for all of eternity my experience isn't even compared to what is really there and even when I'm like talking about it and it seems like I'm trying to over dramatize it or dr make it dramatic like I'm really not like I'm actually it's actually an understatement of how real it actually was it's an understatement of how that fear gripped me that dark presence it's it's an understatement honestly that sadness of whoa like I'm not getting out of here it was like this realization like i i realized that this is not a place i want to be in like i knew that that fire was gonna come like i i knew that i was gonna be in that fire and it was just like this is not it like this is this is not the place you want to go in and he was like sitting some people need that experience because i need them to warn my people about this place god's intention is never for anybody to go to hell that is why he sent Jesus. If he wanted all of us to go to hell, he would have never sent Jesus. Jesus is the way we get out of that place. It's not going to be a party. It's not going to be like some lit turned up. I'm going to just have fun, do whatever I want, baby. YOLO, live life to the fullest. Like, no, like you're going to be tormented like you're not going to have fun it's not going to be fun you're going to know that your actions sent you there you're going to know that your sin sent you there you're going to know like that i'm never getting out of this place even though all of these things are going to happen the worst thing about hell is that the presence of god is not there there there's no presence of god in hell we as human beings, we do not know what it's like to not have the presence of God. Even if you don't believe in God, like even if you don't believe in Jesus, it is still his words that holds this earth together. Everything that you find that is pleasurable, when you eat the, your favorite food, when you laugh at your favorite movie, when you read your favorite book, when you are in a community of people, those moments where you're just having joy. That is the presence of God in those moments. But that's not gonna be in hell. You're not gonna have joyful moments. You're not gonna see people. You're not gonna, you're gonna be alone and abandoned. And I'm telling you guys this because I wanna warn you of this place. 
It was never created for humans to go. It's not created for you to go. The Bible says that God has prepared the place for us. We are seated in high places with the Heavenly Father. We're not supposed to go to hell. We're not supposed to be there. I remember this saying that was like, if you put a microphone in hell, all of them will say, repent. You need to repent. You need to turn back to your first love. And if you've turned away, it's time for you to come back. There's there's no more time for you to lollygag. There's no more time for you to figure out what you want to do. No, that time is now. I was spending time with the Lord the other day and he literally told me, warn my people that the time is now. The end of the age is coming. It is. And we're already in the beginning. Everything that you see that's happening in the world, all of that stuff is happening because we are getting closer towards the end. And if you don't have anything to hold on to, if you don't have your life anchored in the word, anchored in Jesus, you're gonna find yourself blown together in the wind. The time of playing with God is over. The time of saying, oh yeah, I have, I have time. I have, I'm young, I'm dumb. Like, no, you're, you're young, but don't be foolish. You know what the word says. You know what you're supposed to do. You know that you need to get it together. So it's time. So now I'm about to give you guys like 20 scriptures about hell. Um, I'm not going to put all of them on the screen. You can go and look them up later. Pause the video, look them up and just go and search through it. As far as outer body experiences and visions and dreams and prophecy that it's all throughout the Bible. There are many times where Paul didn't know if he was in or out of his body, which is outer body experiences. Revelation is a whole entire book about a, a vision um ezekiel is a prophet he had visions isaiah had visions daniel had visions all of these people in the bible have visions so if you're curious about that curious about outer body experiences and how that stuff relates to the bible go ahead search it up look it up for yourself i'm going to read off these scriptures and then like i said you can go and search it out for yourself Revelation 21 8, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Matthew 25 46, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Matthew 10 28, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Revelation 20.10 And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire in sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were and they were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Matthew 25.41 Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Revelation 2015. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the light, into the lake of fire. Matthew 5 22. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council to the council and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire revelation 14 11 and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night these worshipers of the beast and its image and whoever receives the mark of its name second thessalonians 1 9 they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the lord and from the glory of his might matthew 13 50 and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Second Peter 2, 4. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to the chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Jude 1, 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desires, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Revelation 2014. 
14, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the one of the only son of God. Mark 9, 43 through 48. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Matthew 23, 33, You're, you serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Revelation 19, 20, and the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worship its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Daniel 12, 2, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Luke 12, 5, but I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Hebrews 9, 27, and just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. John 3, 36, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Matthew 3, 12, his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Psalms 9, 17, the wicked shall return to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. Matthew 8, 12, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Proverbs 15, 24, the path of life leads upward for the prudent, that he may turn away from Sheol beneath. Matthew 7, 13 through 14, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Matthew seven twenty one through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Matthew 13, 41 through 42. The son of man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Psalms 145, 20. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Revelation 14, 10. He also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and, and in the presence of the Lamb. Isaiah 66, 24. And they shall go out and look on the dead bodies of the men who have rebelled against me, for the worm shall not die, their fire shall not be quenched, and they shall be in abhorrence to all flesh. Matthew 24, 51. And will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But now I'm going to give one last scripture that sums up everything I've talked about today. And that is the only way we are able to escape this place of total damnation. Acts 4, 12, it says, And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And if you haven't known by now, if you haven't heard it by now, that name is Jesus. So that is the end of the video. Um, I am going to leave it here.
And for anybody who is wondering more, you can DM me. My social media is in the description below. You can look up all of these scriptures. I gave you more than enough. Um, and that's the end. God loves you and you are the salt of the earth.